Hello everyone, welcome back to Pseudotech, and welcome to the third time I've created a series about Linux from scratch. In this series, we're going to be again creating the Linux from scratch operating system, this time using LFS book version 8.2 on Ubuntu 18.0 for LTS, which actually just came out yesterday. Pretty exciting. For the uninitiated, LFS is a method to create your own Linux operating system. We're going to be doing this by compiling the necessary packages, the Linux kernel, and setting up the drives in Grub for booting. It's a great way to get to know how Linux works, and it's actually pretty fun and not too hard as long as you have a little bit of basic Linux skills and some experience with the command line. In the end, you're going to end up with a customizable Linux distribution that could be more secure because you're able to audit packages. It could be smaller because you can decide exactly what you put into it, and really in this case, sky's the limit since everything's open source and you can change really whatever you want. To do this, we're going to be using the Linux from Scratch book, which you can find at linuxfromscratch.org. You can read it online, like I'm probably going to be doing, or you can download a PDF for offline use. I'd really highly recommend checking it out, and it's actually kind of necessary to follow along with this tutorial series. This tutorial isn't really intended to guide you through the whole process, it's really to help you along the way as you follow the commands in the book. When I was first building my first Linux from scratch, I thought it would be really helpful to have kind of a visual to guide me through, especially for the tougher parts of the book, where the book doesn't go into too much detail, and where text is really not as good as just a good visual or a video. So I'm hoping to provide that. LFS 8.2 does have a change log, as all the other versions. The changes are very slight from different versions, mostly just package updates and a couple of new packages, but I'm trying to keep this video series up to date as possible just because it seems like people find it really helpful, so I might as well you know, continue updating, showing people the latest packages if they want to build the latest version. They have added a couple of packages, such as libffi, openssl, python, ninja, and mason. Quickly take a look at the system that I'm running. I'm running Ubuntu 18.04 LTS, as I mentioned before. Just installed this, it should be pretty up to date since it's a very new installation. Um, and I've just installed VLC and OBS. I did go ahead and do the minimal installation um, so that it had fewer packages. I actually really like this because it means that it gets rid of some just bloatware like the Amazon stuff, which Ubuntu tends to have, which is why I don't really use Ubuntu myself. But since it's a very common operating system and it's probably what most of you are using, in terms of my whole general audience, it makes the most sense to just show you how to do it on this. It is a virtual machine that's running in Unraid. I have done this in VirtualBox before, and that works just fine, but because I'm using Unraid kind of as my main disk for most things these days, it just made the most sense to boot it up in there and keep on using that. I've created a single disk for my Ubuntu installation and a second virtual disk in the IMG format just for the LFS installation. You are going to need a separate disk, so you can't do this on a different partition because we're going to be setting up swap partitions and stuff like that. So having a physical hard disk, just a regular SATA based disks, or a USB thumb drive will work just fine. Otherwise, if you're going to virtualize it, you can do an image file like I have, or whatever the virtual box file format is. I'm forgetting what that is at the moment, but just a virtual disk like that. At a minimum, it should be 6 gigabytes, but I have set mine to 12 gigabytes. Anywhere from like, you know, 12 to 16, 20 should be fine if you want to have a little bit of growing room, add your own packages and things like that. There is a BLFS book, which is the Beyond LFS book, which is available. It's the sequel to LFS. I'm not sure if it's updated to 8.2 now. It should be pretty soon if it's not. But generally that just has kind of generic commands and stuff like that to install your own packages, uh, just a wider variety than the LFS book provides to go beyond the base system and continue to work on that. I'm not sure if we're going to be doing that in this series, but depending on what time I have, especially as this series finishes up, we may go into that. I keep on saying that I'm going to do that and we've never actually done that on the channel, um, but if there's enough requests in the comments below, I can definitely go into that. So let's go ahead and get started with the actual part of the LFS system. This is going to be a multi-part process, so I'm going to go ahead and just start it up right now. And we're, we're going to get through the basic host system pr preparation and things like that, installing the packages and patches that we need, and then we'll get into constructing the temporary system in the next video. Let's first go ahead to host system requirements. I'm not going to be doing the split screen for the entire thing, but it is very helpful to be able to just copy commands back and forth. There are a couple of host system requirements that are crucial in order for your host system to actually be able to build and package and modify all the install files that we're going to need for the Linux from scratch system. LFS provides us with this very nice little script that we can run that'll tell us what we need and what we already have. You should have most of these installed already with a default Linux or Ubuntu installation, but this is just a good check. 
Basically what it's going to do is it's going to go through and run the commands that basically tell the, the different programs to spit out their version number and if they're not able to spit out a version number then it's going to say command not found and we're going to need to install those. So it looks like about half of them, a little bit more than half are already installed, but we're missing some like Bison and Gawk and GCC. So we can go ahead and install that. To do that on Ubuntu, we can just do sudo apt install. If you're on like a Red Hat Linux based system, it'll be yum or some similar package manager to that. Other than that, the format is pretty much the same. Um, so we're gonna need Bison. Um, Yak isn't found either, but Yak is actually part of the Bison package, so we can just ignore that one. We're pretty much going through to all the command not found ones and typing those out. So we're actually going to do gawk um, and gcc and g++. This might be compiled together. I'm not sure, actually. We're just going to install them both. Um, and then m4, make. Um, and then make info, which is down here, shows command not found. This is actually part of the text info package. Um, so we're going to go ahead and install that. That should clear up the rest. Just type your password. And then once those are installed, we can just run it again to make sure we have everything. Um, okay, the only issue we have is that it's not pointing to bash. Um, currently we're using dash as our default bash thing with sh, um, and we want that to point to bash. Dash might work, um, but there's a big note right here that says we should definitely use bash, so we're going to do that. To do that, we can just do um, ln-s to create a new, oops, that's ls, ln-s to create a new symbolic link. Um, and we're going to point bash to slash bin slash sh. And looks like we have to do dash sf to make that work since it already exists. Oh, it's fighting us. Okay. Uh, and then we can go ahead and run the script again one more time just to make sure it's working. And there we go. Go without any errors, it looks like. So that means that all of our host system requirements are good to go. The next thing we have to do is set up a disk for the Linux and Scratch installation. We're going to do this on the disk that I showed you before, which is just 12 gigabytes actually showing up as 13 because the virtual disks work a little bit differently. Um, and this is going to house three partitions this time instead of two, which we've done before. Um, we're going to have the root partition, which is where we're going to be building the majority of the Linux and Scratch operating system, a swap partition, um, which you can see the descriptions over here, or just look at the book, which is basically extra RAM. We're going to make that 2 gigabytes. The root partition is going to be 8 gigabytes, And then we're going to have a little bit of extra space left over for a boot partition, which is going to be 100 megabytes. This is for just booting information and some kernel stuff. So to do this, we can open up whichever disk um, manager you have on your operating system. For Ubuntu, it's just called disks, and this is really all you need. We just need to know this little piece of device information here, which is slash dev slash pdb. That's the path to our physical hard disk. Or in, in this case, it's not really physical, but what the operating system would say is a physical hard disk. You can also do this by doing lsblk, which will just list all of the things um, in the that all of the disks that are available on your operating system. So as you can see here, it's the last one. It's this 12 gigabyte disk and it's VDB. All of these would be slash dev slash VDB. So we're going to access that particular physical disk with CF disk to partition it. So just type CF disk. Oh, by the way, this has to be run as root. So it's actually sudo CF disk and then slash dev slash VDB in my case. This could be SDB, or it could be something else. It depends on your disk. It's going to give it something different every time. Usually it'll end in a B if you just have two disks, because dot 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 A is usually the hard disk that you're booting off of currently. So we can do CF disk there, type in the password. And then we have to select the type of, of 
the partitioning format that we have to use. So we're going to use a GPT partition table, which is also GUID. Just do different names for it. You can do that. And as you can see, we have free space. Yippee. So from the free space, we're going to first create our boot partition. So to do that, we're just going to do new. We're going to make it 100 megabytes. Enter. Um, and then it's, it'll be created just like that. Then we can do go down to create another new one. This is going to be our main partition. So we can do that just as eight gigabytes. Perfect. And then we've got three gigabytes extra space. This is going to be in a little bit of extra space, um, which we can assign later to one of the partitions. So just do new, and we're going to make this the swap space. Um, let's just make it just about four gigabytes, use it all up. So we can do that for 4G, 3.9, but it's close enough. And then we can go ahead and write the changes to the file system, right? You need to say yes to make sure, because this is going to delete anything that might be currently on the disk um, and format it as usual. Do yes. Our partition table has been altered, it says, so then we can go ahead and quit. Now we can go ahead and see these changes if we open up the disks program again. We've got this 100 megabyte partition, um, another 8.6 gigabyte partition. The numbers don't exactly match up perfectly. Um, and then another partition for our swap space. They're not labeled or anything yet because they're not actually formatted. Um, they're just discrete partitions that have been set up, but they don't actually have a format to them. So that's what we're going to do next. Making file systems on the partitions we just created is super easy. We're going to create the one for the boot partition first. Um, we're going to be using ext2 for this one, just because that's what the LFS book recommends. It's just a slightly different file system, and it shouldn't make a big difference, but if you're going to be using any larger file system, such as for our main root drive or root partition, we're definitely going to want to use ext4. The swap partition doesn't really have a set file system, because we can't actually store files on it. We're just going to make a swap space on that partition. So to do that, we're going to do lsblk again, just to view them. And this just gives a nice visual of the different drives that we have attached, and now the different partitions that are under our LFS drive. Keep in mind as we're going through these commands that it may be adjusted slightly as be because you're going to have different names. So instead of VDB, you could have SDB or something like that. So just adjust accordingly, keeping that in mind. So first, we're going to make the one for the boot partition. To do that, we're just going to do make fs-v-t and then ext2. And we can select the drive. So in this case, it's slash dev slash vdb1. Press enter. Oops, I said sdb. It's actually vdb. And we're going to have to be boot this. There we go. Um, and then we can do the same thing for VDB2, except for this time we're going to do um, ext4, slightly different file system. Go ahead and do that. And then we can do uh, make swap, which is mk swap, and then just slash dev slash VDB3. Keep on doing sdb, it's actually VDB. <laughs> and of course, we have to be suited for this as well. There we go. Before we go ahead and get to mounting the, these disks, we're going to have to export the LFS variable. So let's make a dir that's on at slash mount slash LFS. This is going to be pretty much our working directory for the rest of the book. And then we can do export. So I have to be sudo for that. Then we can do export. LFS in caps is equal to slash mount slash LFS. Now we could just type this out every single time, but some of the commands in the book are going to just use the LFS variable, um, which would subsequently be just LFS like that with a dollar sign. Um, but this is just going to make it easier to access. We can check it and make sure that we have it set by typing echo LFS and it should echo slash mount slash LFS. This is really important to have so that all the scripts work correctly. Um, if you're gonna re be rebooting your system, it's going to reset this variable and get rid of it, so you're gonna have to set it up every time. Now, it is possible to edit the, the, the LFS variable permanently, and to do that, we could just do nano slash root, and then dot bash profile. Um, and then we could add it there, but I'm not going to do that. We, it's pretty easy to set it up every time, and later when we get to the LFS user, it should have that set automatically anyway. Now that we have our mount point created, we can go ahead and mount the partitions to that. All of this has to be done as root, so we're going to do sudo mount. 
dash v for verbose, dash t for type ext4, um, slash dev, slash vdb2, which is our just main mount point. We're going to be mounting this first so that we can add on the boot partition later um, within it. And we can mount that to LFS, which we should have just set. There we go. So as you can see, it's mounted on slash mount slash LFS, which of course is the LFS variable. Then we can go ahead and make a directory for the boot partition. So sudo make dir um, LFS slash boot. Um, OK, looks like it already exists. And we can do, but if it didn't exist, then you can go ahead and make it right there. I think I already created it earlier. And then we can mount the boot partition to that. So that'd be mount dash v. I always like to see the output of these commands, which is kind of nice. So that's why I always do dash v. And then, or again, this one's ext2 slash dev slash vdb1. And of course, we're mounting that to lfs slash boot. We have to be root for that one. There we go. And now if we change to our LFS directory, you can see that we've got the lost and found directory, as always, and the boot directory. And this looks the same, but it's actually on a different partition. And this whole thing is on a different partition in the first place. Now, lastly, we can set up the swap partition. So we can do slash sbin swap on, just turning on the swap partition, dash v as usual, slash dev slash vdb3. And I think I have to be sudo to do this. Here we go. So now we have the swap partition set up. We have all the other partitions set up. And we're pretty much ready to go ahead and download the packages. So now that we have all of the partitions set up, we can go ahead and download all of the sources. Now, there's a nice source list um, at this wget list from the Linux from Scratch book. It's really just a list of all of the URLs of packages that we're going to need. So we're going to go ahead and download all of these with wget. We first need to make a directory for the sources, though. So we're going to do make dir, um, just call it sources. There we go. And then we can change directory to our sources folder. And here we're going to go ahead and download this file. So we can just go ahead and, and copy this path, paste it in. And I think I'm, I'm going to actually need to be sudo for this. There we go. Um, and there it is. We can check it out. It's really just a list of all of the URLs. The LFS book also recommends making the folder sticky. And sticky basically means that even if multiple users have a have permission to write to a directory, only the actual owner can delete files, which is kind of handy. So we're just going to change the mode of permissions, dash v, um, to a plus wt. And we're going to set that to the source directory. We can just we can cite the absolute path, because that works fine. And we have to be sudo. There we go. OK, so now we're in sticky mode, and we can go ahead and download the packages. So the LFS book has a, has a, has a command for this, but we're going to change it slightly just to make it easier. You're going to need the input file part, and that's going to be set to to wget.list to download all of those. And the continue part is for if you're if you, the downloads get interrupted halfway through, then you're going to want that so that I can restart all of the downloads and just make sure it just picks up where it left off. And the directory prefix is if you're not in the current directory where you want to download the files, which we are, so we don't actually need that. So just make sure it's sudo and then go ahead and run it. I'm going to maximize the screen because this is going to take a little bit while. And I'll put this on a time lapse and just I'll be right back when this is finished downloading. Once all the packages and patches are downloaded, we can check them just with ls. Um, and as you can see, there are tons of packages and a couple of patches left in there. Everything thing should be good to go once you download these. And we're going to move on to the final steps before we can actually start compiling the system. So the first thing we have to do is make a directory called the tools directory. So we're going to cd back one directory. And then do make dir. Tools. 
tools. And the tools directory is basically we're going to be compiling all of the things in the sources directory and popping them into the tools directory so that we have the tools to actually build the system. The fifth chapter of this book, which is the first main section of compiling, is not actually compiling the system. It's compiling the tools that we're going to need to get the system running. Then we can link this newly created directory to our main host system so that everything installs properly. So to do that, just do LFS tools to slash. As usual, I'm not in root. Perfect. And then we're going to go ahead and add a new LFS user. The reason behind this is so that I don't have to keep on forgetting to type sudo, and also so that we're not having administrator privileges when we do this, because that can mess things up, and in general we just want the power that we need to have for compiling the system. So we're going to do group add LFS, and then user add dash s, and then actually the command is over here if we just want to do that. So we can just run this. It's going to add the user with the correct parameters. I just added the group, but I wasn't sudo. There we go. And then we can go ahead and set a password word to the LFS user. I'm just going to set it as LFS. There we go. And then we can change the ownership of the sources directory to that LFS user. There we go. And then lastly, we can log in to the LFS user. So do su for switch user and LFS. We can type the password that we just set and we're in as our new LFS user. Now that we're in as the LFS user, we can go ahead and set up the environment. This is going to take care of things like variables and setting the LFS variables and just things we need to set up first. So we're going to make a bash profile. This is what I mentioned before to set things that are going to start up by default when we open bash. Um, and then we can just add this to the bash profile. And then just to set up the bash profile so that it actually references it, we can do source um, and then slash dot bash profile and it's in the home directory by default. There we go. And now as far as our host system is concerned, we are pretty much ready to go ahead and start compiling our Linux from scratch operating system. We're going to start doing this in the next video where we're going to start with um, Binutils, which is, as always, our first package, and we're also going to be start talking a little bit about SBUs, which is how to measure uh, the amount of time it's going to take you to get each package compiled, which is not necessary, but it's a nice little thing to know when you're going into compiling a package, especially if it's a larger one like GCC or GLIBC. In this video, just to recap, we've explained a little bit about what Linux from scratch is. We've been able to download all of the packages to the correct partitions. We set up a boot partition, a swap partition, and of course our root partition for the LFS system. And then finally, we just set up the LFS user and set up its environment so that's all ready to go in the next video when we start compiling. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you then.